today five different ways that you can trigger a positive response in the viewers who see your graphic designs. Making today's video possible is Millinote, and you might have heard me talk about Millinote on my channel before, as it's an essential part of my graphic design process. It's great for generating ideas and evolving concepts throughout a graphic design workflow, and it also allows you to share your work with colleagues or clients very easily indeed. Millinote does have a free version available to use, so check out the link down below and see how Millinote can improve your design workflow today. So the first way to trigger a positive response in the viewers of your graphic designs is based around colour themes and colour harmony. Now colour is a vastly important aspect to graphic design, and I probably don't need to tell you this, but it brings me back to when I was studying art in school. I would be amazing at sketching with pencil or a pen, but then when it came to adding colour, I really did destroy my design in doing so. Colours have huge relevancy and meaning to a viewer, and thus sending the right message through your graphic design and colour is important. You always need to be aware of the message that your graphic designs are saying to the viewer, and thus the colours should resemble that. You need to study the meanings of certain colours, so for example things like green being positive and representing growth, or red representing possibly danger or even sometimes passion or blood. So yeah, you need to familiarise yourself with colours and their meaning. But my point here is that you need to use colours effectively and in harmony. This requires some experience and some knowledge in the field, but do try to have a colour scheme set in mind before you make the project and make sure it links back to the relevant message. Now there are some really handy tools in Adobe Illustrator for using colour and creating colour harmony. One of them is the colour guide which you can find in the top drop down menu. This is really truly awesome because it can show you different colour schemes such as triad and monochromatic and complementary and you can pick a baseline colour and then it will actually give you suggestions and match other relevant colours to create colour harmony. Also you can match warm and also cool colours to your baseline colour and I think many designers neglect this tool that Illustrator offers. And also I'm not sure if this is just for CC because I've forgotten about the older versions of Illustrator but there's also colour themes which again is a really useful tool for you to use when building colour harmony for your graphic designs. But yeah, when you use colour correctly, it definitely triggers a positive response in the viewer and it's a great way to get your message across through your designs. Now the second point again is to do with colour, but it's actually being a bit sneaky but also clever in the use of the colour. This is one technique that I use very often and that is matching colour in different areas of your design. So for example you can have a colour within an image and you can pick out that colour with the eyedropper tool and create a button or a focal point or a different part of the design which matches that same colour. This helps to create balance which is always positive for the viewer if there is actually balance in your design. This helps viewers subconsciously feel comfortable and easy looking at your graphics. It also can create rhythm through your design and it can also lead viewers attention around your design. It's also a hallmark of a very clever and a very professional design. And if you look closely you probably can see this in a lot of graphics if you keep your eyes peeled. But yeah, it's something I use quite often and it's quite easy to do. Pick out a main or an obvious colour in your design or an image and then replicate that colour in different parts of your design. Now the third way to trigger positive responses in your viewers is to play around with transparency and blend modes. Now this is handy because sometimes a part of your design might be too striking. So for example a logo and you might want to make it more subtle. One way to do that is to lower the opacity or to use a blend mode such as overlay. And again like the previous point I personally use this one quite often. It evokes interest and intrigue in the viewer but also you can actually get across subtle messages 
by having a low opacity for certain design assets. It can also help tie a design together because if a design element has a low opacity, you can see the background of the design, which is less striking on the viewer and it kind of makes it more subtle. This is actually really helpful on portfolios because you can put like a background image or part of the design in a low opacity as the background layer. You see this quite a lot in professional graphic design portfolios and it's a good technique to use. However, you need to be careful when printing using low opacity because some printers don't actually print out too well. So you always need to test print with the low opacity objects. There is one way around this and that is instead of using a low opacity, you can actually just sample the background colour and then make the design object slightly lighter or slightly darker than that colour. Now the fourth point on my ways to trigger positive emotions and responses in your viewers is to use a focal point. Now this one pretty much needs to be adapted to every single design out there. Now focal points are an area of interest within a composition that capture and hold the viewer's attention. They help you control how people view your graphic designs. And this is crucially important because no matter who your target audience is, they're going to have a limited attention span. And being able to capture the viewer's attention and then hold it, even if only for a few seconds, is the key to effective graphic design. When establishing a strong focal point, the first step that you need to take is to understand what you're trying to get across with the message of your design. What is the function of your design and what is the intention? Is it going to set a product? Are you conveying information or are you simply entertaining people? Graphic design is communication through different visual elements. And one of the best ways to establish a strong focal point is to keep the design simple and also uncluttered. You don't want to have so many things going on that confuses the viewer and makes them feel uncomfortable. The focal point forms an object of attention where the viewer's eye can start and then you can use other design principles such as the colour matching one from earlier to lead them around your design. You really want to treat your viewers like they're walking along a journey or a path and you need to guide them and tell them which way to go. A focal point is a great start and it needs to be relevant to your message. So the last point on today's video on ways to evoke positive responses for your viewers is giving room for your typography to breathe. There's nothing worse than having a cluttered design with huge typography taking up most of the space. For a start, this is a turn off to any viewer for the most part. And again, it's going to restrict the viewer's movement and their attention for the entire design. Unless you're making a typographic poster that is just for art purposes, you're not going to want to crowd your designs with typography. A viewer feels more settled when there is a lot of negative space allowing your typography to breathe. They can identify the information clearly and thus they can read it and obtain the message and the information of your design. Also, this leaves the opportunity for other design elements and your design principles to take charge and have room to work and operate. So yeah, give your typography enough room to breathe so it doesn't suffocate in your design. If your design space is suffocating, that's going to resonate with the viewer and that's how they're going to feel too. So thanks again to Millinote for sponsoring today's video. Having a digital mood board and a quick access to evolving ideas and concepts is an integral part of my workflow in 2019. And to do just that, be sure to check out Millinote down in the description box below of today's video. So yeah, there are my five ways to evoke a positive response in the viewers through your graphic designs. Which point did you feel was most useful today? And are you going to implement these in your own graphic designs? Let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel if you want to keep boosting your graphic design awareness and your skills as a graphic designer. Like and share my videos on social media and until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.